This committee will be engaging in what Mr. Cooley described as its vital role of upholding the rule of law as the foundation for California society and commerce. Oversight is not only a responsibility, but also a moral imperative of any legislature. As legislators, we cannot blame others, including the PUC, for being derelict in carrying out their duties if we do not carry out ours. Our first speaker is PUC President Michael Picker. I would like to welcome President Picker, who has been a PUC commissioner for one year and president for only three months. President, president Picker, I'm glad you're here today. Your predecessor last appeared before our committee on March 14th, 2011. That's two, three years and two days ago. Uh, three years and two days ago. During the three-year period in which your predecessor did not appear before this committee, the PUC approved some very significant rate increases. During this period, the Commission completed its investigation of a massive pipeline explosion in San Bruno, which killed eight people and injured 58 others. During this period, one of the state's largest electricity producing power plants, the San Onofre Nuclear Generation Station, also known as SONGS, closed for safety reasons. President Picker, I applaud your contrasting and refreshing commitment to transparency. For example, you pledged to move the PUC forward with openness and transparency in an op-ed piece that you wrote on January 14th. In that same op-ed piece, you said that rebuilding the PUC into an organization that is more fair, open, and accessible, and, effect and effective must start at the top. I also appreciate that when you were appointed a little over a year ago to the PUC, you committed yourself to building a safety culture within the commission. We look forward to working with you on accomplishing these objectives. However, at the same time, we recognize the daunting challenges that you face in this effort. On a nearly daily basis, we hear about new allegations of backroom deals and policy procedures and organizational culture at the PUC that continues to undermine the public's confidence and trust in the commission. Particularly troubling are the special rules in effect at the PUC that discourage transparency. For example, the PUC allows ex parte contacts. This makes California one of only three states nationwide that allows ex parte contact. The state administrative procedure does not apply to PUC, and the appellate courts can decide if they want to hear a challenge to your decisions. Regulated entities enjoy a presumption of confidentiality for their information. We have a problem at the PUC. These special rules have failed, and the public has lost confidence in the Commission and its decisions. This crisis of trust has caused many to ask very fund fundamental questions about the PUC, including the question asked earlier this month by one of my colleagues, why do we even have a PUC anymore? This fundamental question is one that, quite frankly, millions of California taxpayers and ratepayers are likely asking themselves right now. 